Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video looking at covalent bonding. The aim for the video is to look at the two types of bonding, simple covalent and giant covalent, how you can work out the properties for each, and how you can draw covalent bonding using dot and cross diagrams. Now, when you take two non-metals, so for example I've got two chlorine atoms, we talked earlier that all non-metals want to gain electrons. Now, if they want to gain electrons, they can't form ionic bonds because there's nothing there to give them those electrons. So what they have to do is they have to share them. And they do that by overlapping shared pairs of electrons. And that is your definition of a covalent bond, which is the shared pair of electrons between non-metals. So as I said, there are two different types of covalent compounds, simple covalent molecules and giant covalent molecules. The simple covalent molecules only contain a few atoms. So CO2 has three atoms, H2O has three atoms, Cl2 has two atoms, C60 has 60 atoms. Usually if it's less than 100 atoms, we say it's simple covalent. Giant covalent has a lot, it has thousands of atoms. So for example, diamond, graphite, and graphene. Those are the three main ones that you need to know for the exam. Okay, so we're going to focus on simple covalent first. Now simple covalent molecules, as we said, they're tiny. They only have a few atoms. So their average size is 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters, which is really, really small. Now what you need to be able to do is draw the covalent bonding, like we've got in the right hand corner here, for any non-metals. So to do that, there are a few different steps. Number one, you want to work out the valency, which nice and simply is how many bonds each non-metal can make. So to do that, look at the groups for elements in groups four, five, six, and seven. Find out the number of electrons needed to get a full outer shell, so to go up to eight. If it's in group four, it needs four electrons to get a full outer shell. Group five needs three electrons. Group six needs two electrons. And group seven needs one. The only exception to that is hydrogen. Hydrogen has one electron in the outer shell, but it only needs to gain one because that shell can hold a maximum of two. Now, the electrons needed to get a full outer shell, that is the valency. That is the number of bonds an atom can make. Okay, now we've got the valency sorted, we need to be able to draw stick diagrams. So we need to figure out how we're going to put these atoms together. So for example, I'm going to react nitrogen and hydrogen together. Nitrogen's in group five, and hydrogen, remember that's our exception, so it needs one electron. So it can make one bond. So as you can see down here, I've drawn my nitrogen and hydrogen with the correct amount of bonds coming out of them. Step three, I'm going to put the highest valency in the middle, the one with the most bonds, which is my nitrogen, and then I'm gonna put as many of the others around it as possible. So my small one is hydrogen, how many times can that fit onto my nitrogen? Three times. So that's my stick diagram. Now I need to draw the actual covalent bonding. So I'm going to redraw it with circles overlapping every time there's one of those lines, as you can see here. Now each overlap should be a dot and cross. If there's a single line, it's one dot and cross. If it's a double bond or two lines, you get two shared pairs, so two dots and two crosses. Because my NH3 has only got single bonds, I put one dot and one cross in every overlap. And then my final step is I must make sure every element has eight electrons in the outer shell, with the exception of hydrogen, which should only have two. So I'm going to add in electrons onto the outer shell, not in the overlap, until I get up to eight for everything other than hydrogen. So you can see for my nitrogen here, I've got six electrons, I need two more, to give me my five crosses. Nitrogen should have five crosses because it's in group five. If we have a look at a second example, carbon reacting with chlorine. Carbon's in group four, so it makes four bonds. Chlorine's in group seven, so it makes one bond. So I put carbon in the middle and put chlorine around the outside. So straight away, I know my formula is CCl4. The next thing I want to do is redraw with circles overlapping. So I'll put my carbon in the middle and draw four circles overlapping with Cl in. I've only got single bonds, so therefore I put one dot and one cross in each overlap. 
and then I make sure that everything has eight electrons in the outer shell. Carbon already does, but my chlorines don't, so I need to fill them out to make sure they have eight. Now the only way this can become more complicated is if you have a double bond. So for example, in the reaction between carbon and oxygen to make carbon dioxide. So carbon is in group four, so it makes four bonds. Oxygen is in group six, so it makes two bonds. Now you can see here, because oxygen can make two and carbon can make four, you join them up as many times as you possibly can. So it will look like this. So you're gonna have carbon reacted with two oxygens and two double bonds between them. So I now redraw that with my circles overlapping. And because it's a double bond, I put two shared pairs in, so two dots and two crosses. I then make sure I have eight electrons. Carbon's correct, oxygen isn't, so I fill them out. Now there are two major properties for simple covalent compounds that you need to know, which is they have low melting points and they do not conduct electricity. The reason they have low melting points is because there are weak intermolecular forces between the molecules. These weak intermolecular forces are nice and easy to break, so not much energy is needed to break them, giving them low melting points. It's important to remember covalent bonds are strong, so if you turn around and say the bonds are easy to break, you will not get the marks. You have to say weak intermolecular forces. And then why don't they conduct electricity? There are no delocalized electrons or no charged particles that are free to move. Therefore, it cannot carry or pass on a charge. Moving on to giant covalent compounds then. Nice and simply, these have lots of strong covalent bonds. Bearing in mind simple covalent only had a few, we've got a lot of covalent bonds here. This gives every covalent compound high melting points because lots of energy is needed to break those strong covalent bonds. Now the key examples of giant covalent compounds you need to know are all allotropes of carbon. An allotrope is something that's all made of the same element, carbon, but that has different structures. The main ones being diamond and graphite. So if we start with diamond, you can see here every carbon has four strong covalent bonds to them. This makes it really, really strong, so it's used in cutting tools. Graphite, you can see, is also made out of carbon, but it looks different, it has a different structure. Every carbon atom here only has three strong covalent bonds. This gives it a delocalized electron. That delocalized electron is free to move, which makes it useful in electrodes. The other useful property of graphite is it has layers. Those layers can slide past each other, and because they can slide past each other, they reduce friction, and therefore they're really useful as lubricants in cars. There are three other allotropes of carbon that you do need to know, which are nanotubes, graphene, and Buckminster fullerene. One thing that's really important is Buckminster fullerene itself is not a giant covalent compound that has the formula C60, so that is simple covalent. But I've put it in here because it's an allotrope. Now all three of these allotropes have three strong covalent bonds. That means that all of them have delocalized electrons, electrons that are free to move, and therefore they all conduct electricity. So that's one important property for them. In particular in graphene, which is so tiny, so small, it can be used in circuits. Nanotubes are really, really strong. Therefore they're used in tennis rackets. Why are they strong? Because there's lots of strong covalent bonds. And then Buckminster fullerene, it looks like a football. What it can do is it can cage different drugs, so it's used in drug delivery systems. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.